cat died. Music fades. But art is for keeps. The use of allegory in storytelling is nothing new. Legendary tales like Animal Farm, Lord of the Flies, and Watership Down, once read in middle school classrooms, have educated generations on understanding that stories can often mean more than what's written on the page. In Focus Features Inside, Willem Dafoe plays Nemo, a kind of modern-day Robin Hood and master art thief, whose sole purpose is to steal art from the rich. Hello, I'm Vasilis Katsubis. I'm the director of the film Inside. I'm Jorgos Kornilas, I'm the producer of the film. And I'm Leonardo Bigazzi, and I'm the curator of the art collections. Inside takes its time to establish the obscenely luxurious world of the Manhattan art scene in painstaking detail, while simultaneously parodying it to demonstrate a disdain for the high society inhabited within. The literal trappings of luxury become a character in their own right. The art collection definitely was built thinking of a, char of a character. Uh, uh, on the one hand, it needs to be, let's say, the, the physical manifestation of the art collector, which is this kind of invisible uh, antagonist of, of, uh, of Nemo that we never see or very rarely see only in, the, in his dreams and in his hallucinations. Uh, and on the other hand, it had to be a constant mirror for Willem's struggles and from, you know, from, for his fragilities. So some of the references are pretty literal, as, as we, we see, you know, as a, in A Perfect Day by Maurizio Cattelan, the idea of, uh, you know, a man that is attached to the wall and, of course, uh, 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 pri deprived of his freedom. Help me! Get me out of here! Nemo leads us through a wretched fight for survival a la Castaway. which is juxtaposed against a brutalist upscale Manhattan loft. I feel you, brother. I'm gonna set you free. It was something from the really beginning that what I wanted to, for the for my uh, hero, my character to to feel and uh, the, to include inside this uh, brutalist uh, apartment, inside the natural physical elements that uh, you would expect of someone uh, um, having in a, in, an, in a survivalist film in a lonely island like Castaway. So I really wanted to have uh, the seasons changing inside the house. So you have the, the cold uh, era, the warm era, and then you have the raining season for, for, for a moment. So I wanted to have all this that, that can happen in in the uh, in an outdoor environment to have it uh, inside in the in the apartment. The production design and art selections play a fundamental role in the development of the film. As Nemo grasps at the objects around him to help plot his escape, with concrete walls and no relief from the elements, the film brings new meaning to brutalist architecture. I'm a very big fan of brutalist architecture yeah. and I uh, think uh, most of the people find it ugly, I find it beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's a, a very cinematic uh, it's a very architectural cinematic. Uh, line, let's say, style. Yeah. In the initial premise, you know, somebody gets trapped in an apartment, let's transfer the remote island experience in Times Square, let's say. I, I mean, I don't know if everybody who watches the film thinks about the seasons, but what they create uh, in terms of uh, in their interaction with, with the character is so so real and so powerful and makes the story, you know, uh, go further. Clever use of interior design elements such as central heating and a fire sprinkler system represent larger themes of climate change and the impact of humanity on Earth. We even uh, we were discussing that, you know, at some point somebody might think that the, this apartment is the planet. Somebody's hacking, you know, as humanity, we have hacked the, the security system of the planet. And now the planet is turning against us. Humanity is like a, not, you know, a, a thief that it's taking the most valuable uh, Resource. resources of, of the planet. And now the planet uh, reacts. 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 It's so, it's so, it's, I mean, Ecological. Like, it's so it's so it's so crazy how many things you can think about this film. In recent years, films like Parasite and Triangle of Sadness have elevated themes surrounding the subversion of class structures and the excesses of high society. Beyond the art collection, every object that he is using and he destroys, for some people that they know how much it costs to go like, <laughs> I mean the the base that he smashes, I think it's an 8,000 euros uh, dollar space. So the chairs, uh, it 
cost $25,000 each, something like this in, um, in, I mean, even the chess board that you see, it's a, that we use is a $30,000 chess board. I mean, so I really want to have these objects that are really, really um, expensive and uh, that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they don't have any value because, <laughs> you know, in, in the environment that Nemo starts living, there's no value at all because nobody can uh, see them, nobody can admire them and nobody can give you know, a, a price uh, to that. They are just for the utility purposes of his survivor. There is not only one message. There might be, you know, many messages. Uh, depends of how you see, it, how the audience sees it, how everyone, you know, everyone's personality and everyone's uh, thoughts, uh, engagement Under with understanding, this, understanding of the story, and engagement of the, uh, in the story. Basically, what it says, you know, there is no uh, creation with no destruction. I, I feel, you know, this is a ecology, as we said be before. You know, things kind of comes to a, cir a circle. This idea of, you know, subverting the power structures of art, and in the same way that, you know, a thief that enters an apartment to steal something all of a sudden becomes trapped in the in the apartment that he entered. So there's all these um, um, subtext. Uh, Vasilis always says that art is a is a strong um, way of communicating. And so in a in a film that was without m m mostly without dialogue, the art was an incredible opportunity to communicate with the with the audience with with the subtext of references. When you are, um, let's say you are trapped in a house and the house is on fire and you need to break the door to set free. You break your door. You don't think you are destroying something. You're, you're setting yourself free. So in that sense, Nemo has never, doesn't have the understanding that he's destroying things. He's just trying to survive and he's trying to use whatever is available for him to, to find a way out. Jasmine, help me. Get me out of here. And for, for me, this is one of the most beautiful things of, of this story and of this project that, you know, one thing is the condition of, of, uh, of, of, of the protagonist and the audience is, you know, um, uh, is, is, is following that. Um, and, um, but the perception of how he's doing things with the way that we experience those things because we're not in the position of him has a difference. Of the same of the same action, and this is so valuable in in an audience experience, you know. Giorgio's produced Triangle of Sadness just before going into production for Inside. Both films are made for audiences that are gluttons for punishment, often contrasting stark images of opulence and filth. Trapped in less than savory circumstances, protagonists in both films lose sight of their previous bourgeois lifestyles in favor of sustaining life. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. Uh, what I can say to you is that he's an anarchist. Uh, I was about to say that, but I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> I, I only want to say um, those two films were um, were shot in a row. It was, you know, like two years of my life and uh, I finished shooting tri uh, Triangle and then we started prep of Inside. It was like totally back to back. So um, I might say that, uh, you know, it's both films uh, made me understand a lot of things about filmmaking and, you know, how you can create an interesting piece and how it can also be accessible to as much audience as possible. I consider them to be very relevant to the world right now. You know, it's um, they describe a very certain uh, and very clear uh, side of humanity that we see in everyday life very present and um, you know and for sure we're gonna pay the price of, of that whatever this will be. Has humanity lost sight of what's important and are we trapped in a prison of our own making? These strong messages don't elude viewers as we watch our protagonist ascend into the light both literally and metaphorically freeing himself from the destitute confines of overindulgence. This subject between the two films, they have something which is, you know, they they comment about something. Yeah, but, uh, but I think it the the, the pe people need this commentary. I think we are in this um, we're living in the world of 
people questioning uh, this uh, what is luxury and why we need luxury and what is now, important what is important this and, is the most but uh, yeah yeah what is important it's, it's something that you see that uh, modern humanity is uh, rethinking about how the the want uh, to have the relationship with objects and uh, um, and wealth basically and wealth yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.